Hi, everybody. It's still August 21, 2019. The crazy lunacy that is taking place in our country is really getting on my nerves now. I want to show you some crazy that is taking place. Um, what really is amazing is our fellow Americans who are crazy, but they're not recognizing the radical changes that have taken place in our country. Uh, that only makes it more crazy. You know, it's kind of like that crazy making behavior. Americans just keep on going like nothing really has changed when everything has changed. So I'm going to go through some information to show you crazy. And also, I'm going to show you a video that was sent to me by a subscriber. You might want to think, if you've got the resources, think about getting the hell out of this country. Because nothing is going to get better. Everything is just going to get worse. So, I was sent, uh, the link I think was underneath a video of mine. This, secretive warfare training being staged in 21 North Carolina counties. Army says, yeah, at least you're getting a warning, North Carolina. A series of special forces military training exercises, including gunfire with blanks, is being staged across 21 North Carolina counties, starting August 30, going through to September 12. And the Army is telling the public not to be alarmed at the suspicious looking activity. Well, it's no longer a suspicious looking activity, right? Because our military have been training on Main Street, USA. After 9-11, we've seen this over and over again in many areas of our country. Posse comitatus. Americans, do you know what that means? It's dead but it operated for a very long time in our country. See, people are focused on the political crap, the game that they watch. You know, it's like reality TV for Americans. The staged political crap that just gets more and more sickening, disgusting, immature, the lunacy is off the charts. And the video that I'll show you in a moment, well, a whole lot of Americans have moved to an area in Mexico because they can't stand the political crap. All right, uh, Posse Comitatus. Well, that was essentially the separation between our military and our military being involved in the domestic affairs. There was a real separation. That separation is gone. You, as an American taxpayer, spent a lot of money for the military to build mock cities for their training. Well, now they're all over the place, even in heavily populated counties like Wake, Cumberland, Union counties are among the training sites. All right. Now, this is a video provided by our military. But what is the first ad that comes up? Lust. Lust. Lustgreenville.com. What is this? Lust. Uh, uh, it's only four seconds, but it went for, mm, I don't know, 30 seconds watching these women dance on a pole. Lust. Lust. Our country is so sick and twisted. We've got to get off this morally superior, exceptional bullshit. Because that's killing us. Th this delusion. You know, it's like, my God. It, it, it. 
Now it feels like you're surrounded by psychotic, psychotic Americans, which make you feel like you are living in a psychiatric institution. So here we go. Great ad, isn't it? Okay. This is, I guess, special warfare exercises kept under the radar in North Carolina. Under the radar? Here we go. Oh, great. No volume. I don't believe it. No volume. Interesting. All right. Yeah, I'll link below to this. You can watch it. Explosions, gunfire. But did you happen to see our military? Look, the gun. The gun pointed at a car that was stopped by the military. Americans pulled over by our military. And did you happen to notice right here. Okay, well, this did have volume. I mean, it, it, the audio worked prior to my <laughs> doing this video. Okay, what does this woman say to an American that is up against the fence? You don't have ID? No, ma'am, I don't have ID. This is the training exercise. Stopping Americans asking for ID and pointing a gun at an American pulled uh, off the street, sitting in their car. Are you getting what's happening here? So, unfortunately, you don't get to hear the American ISIS, American ISIS in the pickup truck. You don't get to hear the gunfire. You won't hear the explosions, not in my video, yeah, here we go, 21 counties, North Carolina, 21 counties. Now, you shouldn't be alarmed, you shouldn't be alarmed about this, I, you have got to click on the link below and listen to the explosions, the gunfire, unbelievable. And you've got Americans who actually say that they're really proud of their military and, well, they understand that the military need a place to train. Okay, do we have Americans who remember none of this took place, none of it? You know, look, uh, I really do think that it might be time for everyone who has resources to get the hell out of this country. Watch this video just for a few minutes. You know, when this was sent to me by a subscriber and I was watching it, and there are, there's some, you know, things that are said in here. Look, that, <clears throat> you know, it, it, you could certainly say, oh, it, this video is all about propaganda. No, it's not. But, yeah, there were some things said that uh, raised an eyebrow for me. But that's only because they have different takes on what's happening here in our country, different opinions, different thinking than I do. Okay, well, that's fine. But what, as I was watching this, it really reminded me of when I actually lived life instead of surviving it, which is what many Americans are doing right now. There are many places in Mexico that many outsiders, for whatever reason, never get a chance to see. 
villages, locals, called Mexico Real, the real Mexico. For example, here, along Mexico's largest freshwater lake, Lake Chapala, 30 minutes south of Mexico's second largest city, Guadalajara, in Jalisco State. Here, far removed from the often nasty news we hear about Mexico, are images of peace and tranquility, where there are a lot of foreigners, U.S. citizens, Canadians, and British citizens, everywhere. So many of them, most Mexicans here don't even pay attention to them anymore. Perhaps thinking, well, what are you going to do? Particularly here in the village of Ajijic. Nowadays, there are as many foreigners here as there are Mexicans, around 15,000. We're in a place called Paradise. <laughs> this is uh, Ajijic, Mexico. Minnesota native Terry Vidal is the executive director of the nonprofit Blake Chapala Society, the ground zero meeting place, you might call it, for foreigners here located in the center of Ajijic. We're, we're essentially the social hub of the foreign community, um, Lakeside. Essentially, we're a multicultural center um, with a mission of having an, an integrated community where everybody is working together to maintain and improve our quality of life, Lakeside. Terry says the population of foreigners here fluctuates depending on the time of year. Some live here full time, others come down for the winter. There's at least 7,000, uh, up to 17,000 foreigners here. But we're at 5,000 plus feet, we're the same height as Denver. And with the lake, it kind of maintains a, a fairly constant, nice climate. The average year-round temperature here is around 68 degrees Fahrenheit. 20 Celsius. Why did you come here? I married a I married a Mexican gal. I left my career behind and got the heck out. What do you miss? Do you miss anything? I don't miss U.S. politics. I think that that's the best thing about living here. <laughs> there's there's a lot of push immigration going on right now with people leaving the United States because of the political situation, and we're seeing it here. We have a lot of new faces in the town. Ahihi wheeler and dealer realtor Mario Garcia here at accesslakechapala.com sells and rents homes here. You can get a nice house from, let's say, $200,000, and you can have a really nice house in the area. Rent. Okay, we can start with the studios. We can say $350 for a place to rent, even all inclusive. That means electricity, gas, internet, telephone cleaning, garter, everything, for $350. Mario's office pretty busy lately with new arrivals from the States and Canada. Okay, guys, so are you ready to run the house? Yes, we are. Okay, sure. Showing up in Mario's office today, U.S. citizens Fred and Sandy Garcia. Sandy, where's the deposit money? Let me see. I think it's, it's right here. Who sold their home and all their belongings back in Arkansas and are presently putting down rent deposit for a place they found here for less than a thousand dollars a month. Okay. Uh, what are we doing? What are we doing? Life here. It was humanitarian work, more than coming here to retire, that brought Ruthie and Charles Baker to Ahihik, selling their home and all they had in Dallas, Texas, a few years back and paying less than $200,000 cash for this fully furnished turnkey home outside of Ahihik. Ruthie started baking and making chocolate sweets here from home and now sells them in her local shop that she's opened up here in Ahihik when she realized U.S. citizens here were missing these kinds of sweets back home. And organic food, um, yeah, yeah. They have assisted living for 1500 in a mansion. They talk about how Mexicans, family is number one. The elderly are respected. And yeah, remember the days? So, here. Thousand dollars for on this was under $200,000 for a really nice looking 
I guess casita and land. Thousand dollars <laughs> for on lush grounds with citrus trees right off the lake. With his collection of furry friends. That's more here in what he calls the shadow of Mount Garcia on the south side of Lake Chapala, away from most foreigners living across the lake in Ahihiki. Yeah. Remember this guy? The Philly shooting. You ready? Philly cop shooter was federal informant last week's Philadelphia shootout between alleged gunman Maurice Hill and police U.S. Attorney U.S. Attorney William McSwain was quick to blame Philadelphia District Attorney Larry Krasner who McSwain said promoted a new culture of disrespect for law enforcement in this city oh my god well the 36 year old suspect in the shooting, which left six officers wounded, has been a federal informant for years. Yeah. Crazy, crazy. U.S. Navy ready for Venezuela mission, says a top commander. Are you sick of this country? I am. It's ready to do what needs to be done. Taken over another country. I won't speak to details of what we're planning and what we're doing, but we remain ready to implement policy decisions and we remain on the balls of our feet. The United States Navy is the most powerful Navy in the world. If a policy decision is made to deploy the Navy, I'm convinced that we'll be able to do what needs to be done. Yay! Those remarks came just weeks after Trump said he was considering a blockade or quarantine of the Latin American country. What is this? U.S. drone downed by surface-to-air missile over Yemen. Another drone downed. How dare you, Yemen Air Defense, shooting down a U.S. drone? How dare you fight back to try to save your country? Apparently, <clears throat> they're stating that it was Shia Houthi rebels. Our skies are no longer open to violations as they once were, and the coming days we'll see great surprises. Do Americans even know that we're, yeah, helping the Saudis destroy Yemen? Probably not. Oh, but wait, hey, both Saudi and U.S. officials have pointed the finger at Iran. What a surprise for supplying the Shia forces in Yemen with these longer range weapons as part of a broader proxy war for the Middle East. Get us out of those unnecessary wars? Isn't that what Trump campaigned on? Has he done that? No. No. Here, six seniors face sex charges for sex in park. What? Okay. Uh, I was a little surprised to find that it was in Connecticut. Six people ranging in age from 62 to 85 face sex charges after being arrested in a conservation area in Connecticut. 85-year-old woman. That's it. That's all you got from Fox 5. Well, there's another article. Hmm. <laughs> the octogenarian accused of lewd behavior in a park near their Connecticut home, denied wrongdoing. Joyce Butler, 85, her husband Richard, 82, were cited for breach of peace 
at a Fairfield Park about four miles from their home in Bridgeport. Really? Wow. Okay, let's read just a little bit of this. The couple vehemently denied engaging in lewd activity while parked in their Toyota. We were just sitting there. And we just got caught in what was going on, Joyce Butler said. And they were perfectly all wrong. There was nothing going on at all. The couple, who have five adult children, 14 grandchildren, said they went for a drive last Friday and stopped at the Grace Richardson Conservation Area. We were just sitting in the car to get a little air, and that was it. Uh... Joyce's husband, Richard, said this, I haven't had sex in maybe 10 years. I got no blood flow. I got three doctors that would back me up. What the fuck can I do in the fucking front seat of the car? Asked Richard, who said he uses a walker and can no longer navigate the park on foot as he used to with his wife. Yeah, Richard said he was behind the wheel of the couple's car when police pulled the vehicle over while they drove home. He initially thought he was going to be ticketed for driving without his seatbelt on, but then several cop cars approached. I guess they got a bad criminal threat score. Um, several cop cars approached, and Joyce recalled her husband saying, I feel like I just killed somebody. A court appearance next Tuesday well, when we do go, we will tell the truth. <laughs> oh, Jesus, God, my God, Joyce said, 85 years old, which we tried to tell the police, but they didn't listen to us. We will tell the judge when we go next week. Richard said the couple has not hired a liar due to the prohibitive cost. We didn't do nothing I'm not going to pay some lawyer because we didn't do nothing, he declared. Yes, he has no blood flow. He uses a walker, sitting in a Toyota. What's going on? Who knows? Anti-vaccine activist assaults California vaccine law. Okay, author, the the author, Dr. Richard Pan. Now, anti-vaccine activist was cited for assault by the Sacramento Police Department on Wednesday after he live streamed on Facebook a physical confrontation with state Senator Richard Pan, author of legislation to restrict vaccine exemptions. Kenneth Austin Bennett. Okay. Uh, he apparently challenged Pan in the Senate run in 2018 in the primary, um, but did not qualify for the general election. Bennett filed a recall petition against Pan earlier this year, alleging that the senator was committing treason by authoring bills to increase vaccination rates in the state. A video of Bennett on Facebook as he confronted Pan and then uh, when he struck him from behind. Afterward, Bennett said on the video that I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah, Bennett, you probably shouldn't have, but is this, is this a staged thing? Is somebody so insane that they would live stream an assault on a public official and wouldn't they know that they would be branded an anti-vaxxer, activist, causing violence, when we have so much in the media now regarding social media, conspiracy theorists, and that's what anti-vaxxers are considered, conspiracy theorists, we're extremists. I don't know what to think about this, but uh, something is very off here, and if it wasn't, you know, Bennett staging something to monitor social media even more closely, 
then maybe he was struck with some frequencies and made to behave this way. I don't know. But it's really bad for all of us. I pushed Richard Pan for lying, laughing at us, for treason. Okay, he got what he deserved. Or what... He said if Pan got what he deserved, he would be hanged for treason, for assaulting children, for misrepresenting the truth. So Pan's spokeswoman said this. Um, Anti-vaccine activists. Yeah. This is moving from a peculiar fringe curiosity to a violent extremist movement. This is not a surprise when violent rhetoric is used. Assaulting a public official is the logical next outcome of violent language. Guys, we need to be very careful about what we say and what we do. What is this? Oh, God. Incredibly sick, federally funded ex experiments are happening behind closed doors in secret laboratories all over America. All right. Uh, this summer, the Trump administration made the commendable decision to terminate all internal National Institutes of Health experimentation using aborted human fetal tissue. Well, guess what? All they did was cancel a controversial 10 million contract between NIH and the University of California, San Francisco, which required two healthy human fetuses per month from elective abortions to be used for disturbing and unnecessary taxpayer funded medical experimentation on animals. Well, guess what? That cancellation represents only a very small fraction of the federally funded human fetal tissue experimentation that is going on around the nation. Lied to again. It did not halt another 200 projects outside of NIH using human fetal tissue that received a combined $115 million in taxpayer funds. 2018. Babies are terminated at abortion clinics in university affiliated hospitals. The remains of these unwanted children are harvested for research college, college professors eternally hungry for lucrative federal grants solicit NIH funds earmarked for nightmarish human fetal tissue research on animals. All right, you could read. I mean, uh, all right. Um, the experiments that UCSF was doing, uh, they would transplant intestines removed from 18 to 24 week old aborted fetuses onto the backs of six to eight week old mice. In another bizarre Frankenstein study funded by taxpayers, they implanted intact reproductive tracts from nine and a half to 22 week old human fetuses, including from a pair of aborted twins into mice dosed with synthetic estrogen. Okay. Congress knows. Uh, I, I don't know what to make of. Well, let me just cut to the chase. Just about every sort of evil that you can possibly Im imagine is exploding all over the world. All over the world. Now, Trump is just a crazy lunatic of a president. The, the land of ice is fast becoming the land of opportunity. Global warming is melting Greenland, exposing the rocks beneath and attracting speculators. But President Trump's interest in buying the country had been dismissed as a joke. 
not, not anymore. anymore. Essentially, it's a large real estate deal. A lot of things can be done. It's hurting Denmark very badly because they're losing almost $700 million a year carrying. So they carry it at a great loss. And strategically for the United States, it would be nice. That's bemused Greenlanders and the Danes who are responsible for the country's foreign and defense policy. Yeah. Denmark's Prime Minister, Minister who's visiting, visiting Greenland, Greenland, said President Trump's offer was absurd. Thankfully, the time where you buy and sell other countries and populations is over. Let's leave it there. Jokes aside, we would naturally love to have an even closer strategic relationship with the U.S. Beneath it. Was there anything wrong with what she said? I don't think so. Trump, as a sitting president, wants to buy a country, Greenland, when there were no offers of sale. I think it's absurd. I think it's kind of crazy. Uh, but he's a real estate man, right? So. Trump wants to buy Greenland because, well, it's great real estate. So what is he talking about? That it would be, you know, strategic for the United States? Really? I look forward to going, but I thought that the Prime Minister's statement that it was absurd, that was a, it was an absurd idea, it was nasty, I thought it was an inappropriate statement. Was that nasty? Was it nasty? Inappropriate statement? Nothing that she said did I find as nasty or even inappropriate. She's saying the time of uh, people buying countries, you know, that's over. Well, maybe over except for the Queen of England, but uh, what's going on here? It's not nasty. And I don't like the fact that he is saying that this woman was nasty, but this is what narcissists do. They will not take responsibility for their own behavior, and they will attack the person who calls them out or says something that reflects uh, the truth about someone who is bona fide nuts. Yeah, I want to buy Greenland as a private citizen, but he's the president of the United States. All well, she had to do is say, no, we wouldn't be interested, but we can't treat the United States of America the way they treated us under President Obama. You know what? Did you feel that this woman was nasty towards the United States of America? Um, she was talking about Trump, not the United States of America. And this had nothing to do, you know, with the two countries. It had to do with Trump, private, he wanting to buy Greenland. Not the United States buying Greenland, Trump buying it. Okay. Um, uh, uh, I thought it was a very uh, not nice way of saying something. They could have told me no. This is something that's been discussed for many years. Harry Truman had the idea of Greenland. I had the idea. Other people have had the idea. It goes back into the early 1900s, but Harry Truman very strongly thought it was a good idea. I think it's See, he has to come up with all of this. Look, he's not talking about the United States buying Greenland. He's talking about Donald Trump, Mr. Real Estate Guy, buying Greenland. So what the hell is he talking about when he makes the statement that it would be strategic for the United States. You know, he's, oh, I, I don't know what to say anymore. I, I just don't know what to say anymore. It's a good idea because uh, Denmark 
This is losing $700 million a year with it. It doesn't do them any good, but all they had to do is say, no, we'd rather not do that, or we'd rather not talk about it. Don't say what an absurd idea that is. Sir, she's not talking to me. Excuse me. She's not talking to me. She's talking to the United States of America. No, Trump, you are absolutely 100% wrong. She was talking to you. She is not talking to the United States. America, you don't talk to the United States that way. At least under me. Now, yeah, under me, you're not going to talk like that. Uh-uh. I make an offer as a private citizen, but I'm the president of the United States. Something is very wrong there, but I make an offer to buy Greenland. I can't stand this country. I can't. It's, it, it is bona fide crazy. Uh, and then he cancels a trip to Denmark. The little child didn't get his way. So I'm canceling. I'm not going to do any real, uh, you know, well, business as the president of the United States. I'm not going to show up. Maybe he included Denmark because he wanted to buy Greenland. Then he realizes he can't buy Greenland. So, too bad, I'm not going to show up. Are you kidding me? Yeah, you know, we, we have seen uh, over the course of our lifetime, certainly as adults, every administration just get worse and worse and worse. And they are acting like, I mean, do we remember integrity, dignity, uh, I don't even know what to say about this guy, but he doesn't represent me. And this incident, she wasn't talking to the United States. And it was absurd. A sitting president privately wants to buy a country. Whoa. All right. Uh, uh, tell me what you think, guys. Tell me what you think, please. I, I'm really... Um, every single day now, I just get more and more sick, sick to my stomach of what is going on in this country. It, it's something, <laughs> it's scary. It's scary.